Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logic. In the last video, we went through the counterexample. In this video, it'll be the counterexample extended. So we did the counterexample for categorical syllogisms, which are all are, no are, some are, some are not. But in this video, we're going to see how we can use it for extended arguments, for other arguments other than categorical syllogisms. Now here's an example. Listen to this argument. If Congress agrees to lower taxes, then the number of businesses will increase. Congress will not agree to lower taxes, therefore the number of businesses will not increase. All right, now that you see the argument, to identify the form of the argument, we begin by comparing the statements. Now notice that the second premise is the negation of the antecedent in the first premise, and the conclusion is the negation of the consequent. So the form of the argument is like this. All right, now notice that C and T stand for whole statements. That C stands for Congress agrees to lower taxes. And T stands for the number of businesses. So we will now invent two new statements to substitute the place of C and T that will make the premise true and the conclusion false. Here are two possibilities. C for Michael Jackson traveled to Jupiter and T Michael Jackson died. Now when we substitute these terms for these terms it turns into this argument. And since the Michael Jackson argument has true premise and a false conclusion it is clearly invalid. Which means that the form is invalid. Which means that the original argument is invalid. Now when we invented new statements to substitute the place of C and T, we were careful to select statements that everybody agrees about as to the truth value. So suppose instead of Michael Jackson, we chose these terms, E.T. traveled to Jupiter. We would get this argument. Now if E.T. traveled to Jupiter, then E.T. died. Now we're, we're not sure if E.T. Uh, would travel to Jupiter, if he did travel to Jupiter, that he would die. We wouldn't know that ET didn't travel to Jupiter, so therefore this argument proves nothing. So it's important to pick terms that are very popular for most people already know the truth value. Here is another example. Look at this argument. Now when we compare the statements, we see that the argument is composed of three simple statements. Now each of the statements appears twice and we get this form of the argument. This is the form of the argument. Now inventing three new statements to replace T, C, and P can be difficult, but here are three that will work. Now when these statements are substituted into the argument form, the result of the argument is this. Thus, the two premises are true and the conclusion is false. Now the easiest way of making a conditional statement false is by making the antecedent true and the consequent false. All right, now here's your dreaded practice problems, which are absolutely necessary. Let's do some practice problems involving conditional statements and other argument forms. Here's, an, here's the first practice problem. Listen to this argument. If assault rifles are outlawed, then mass shootings will decrease. Mass shootings will decrease, therefore assault rifles will be outlawed. Now, what is the argument form of this argument? Go ahead and press pause, write down your answer, and then press play and see if you're correct, because I'm going to give you the answer in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. Notice A and M represent whole statements. All right, what set of substitutions proves that this form is invalid? Go ahead and press pause, because the answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. As you know, when we substitute these letters for these terms, we get this argument, which gives you true premise and a false conclusion, which means that the form is invalid. And if the form is invalid, then the original argument is invalid. Here is another practice problem. What is the form of this argument? Press pause, because I'm going to give you the answer in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. As you notice that O and G represent whole statements. All right, now what set of substitutions proves that this form is invalid? Go ahead and press pause. The answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. When we substitute the terms, then we get this argument, which makes the premise true and the conclusion false, because if Donald Trump was a woman, 
then the premise would be true, but the conclusion would be false. The antecedent is true, and the consequence is false. All right, here is another practice problem. What is the form of this argument? Press pause. The answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. Notice that C and H stand for terms, not whole statements. Now, what set of terms proves that this argument form is invalid? Press pause because the answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. This substitution makes the premise true and the conclusion false. All right, here's another practice problem. What is the form of this argument? Press pause. The answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. Notice that P, E, and O stand for whole statement. And if you got that right, good job, because that was a difficult one. Now, what set of substitutions makes this form invalid? Go ahead and press pause. The answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. This set of substitutions makes the premise true and the conclusion false. Here's another practice problem. What is the form of this argument? Press pause. The answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. Now, what set of substitutions proves this form invalid? Press pause. The answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. This set of substitutions makes the premise true and the conclusion false. Here is another practice problem. Now, what is the form of this argument? Press pause. The answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. Notice that B and I represent whole statements. What set of substitutions proves this form invalid? Go ahead and press pause. The answer is in three, two, one. Ding! That's correct. This set of substitutions makes the premises true and the conclusion false. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a great job. Give yourself a big round of applause. Now you're well equipped to do your homework, which is to prove argument forms invalid by using the substitution instance. Thank you so much. Please post your questions and comments below. Check out our other videos. And that's all, folks. Have a great day.